Yet another Wellness Wednesday. Welcome to Ask Your Doctors. I am Dr. K. Remember, September is Prostate Awareness Month. So later on, we will get to find out from our guest why we even have a prostate at all. Because somebody suspects it's only there to cause us trouble. In any case, approximately 1 in 17 men in South Africa are at risk of being diagnosed with prostate cancer. So to debunk all the myths and to inform us better, today we have our clinical oncologist, uh, Dr. Nokwanda Zuma. Doc, welcome. Hello, Dr. K. How are you? I'm all right, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for making the time. Let's start at the top. Okay. Why do we even have a prostate? Well, for men, the purpose of a prostate gland is to release the hormone testosterone. Okay. And that gives you your manly characteristics, your deep voice, um, your muscles, um, your ability to have your sexual um, libido as well. So it has its importance. I thought you were going to start with the last part. <laughs> <laughs> the muscles the are most a side the, show. the most fun part. The muscles are a side show. <laughs> okay. So we need the prostate, guys. It's not just a trivial addition to our anatomy. Mm. Anyway, welcome, Doc. Um, thanks for joining us. On the show, we would like, to, we aspire to inspire everyone out there the young ones, the mothers and fathers to the young ones, and we would like the black nation to say, where do you come from? And uh, yeah, please tell us. So I'm a young lady, I'd like to believe, that comes from the city of Peter Maritzburg. I was born and bred there. I went to medical school at the University of KwaZulu Natal, and then post-grad I also studied at University of Natal as a radiation oncologist. Okay. So we've been, we've been to Durban recently, mm. spent a while there, mm. and we were inundated with good people from Durban, and now we continue. It's a lovely city yeah, for we, many things. We want to go back. Yeah. It's a lovely city for winter. For many things. Yeah. Okay. I believe it's now called University of... It's Nelson Mandela um, Rory Shasha School of Medicine. And the whole university is called? Uh, university of KwaZulu-Natal. Yeah, it combines several... Faculties, yes, that's uh, correct. Se several campuses. Campuses and faculties, yes. Does now the old Westville fall under that? Um, I'm actually not sure. Okay. I'm not sure, honestly. No, no. We'll, we'll it's been a long time since I've been to varsity. As you can imagine, even longer for me, but I'm glad it doesn't show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, what inspired you into medicine? <clears throat> Medicine, um, as a young black child, um, there were many people in my family who got sick and I could never help them. So I made, it a, made a decision when I was young that I'm gonna be a healer and mm. I'm gonna learn how to be able to heal um, not only my family members, but my community at large. Um, so that's what inspired me to enter into medicine. And I believe your love for oncology comes a long way. Very long way. Um, I don't know if it was a blessing or a, um, a f um, fate. A lot of my family members were diagnosed with cancer when I was young. Mm. And watching them perishing and not being able to have the skills, the knowledge to help them, I think um, subconsciously drove me to being a radiation oncologist. Mm. And uh, it's 10 years now since you started your journey with oncology. Yes. Okay. I believe there's more to prostate than just cancer. Indeed there is. And uh, before we get carried away with cancer, please tell us the ins and outs of the prostate as far as the other stuff we have to be aware of. Okay, so the prostate gland is located under the, um, it surrounds the urethra, which is located under the base of the bladder and between the uro urogenital um, diaphragm. Okay. Um, it releases hormones, that's its functions. Um, when you're to produce the hormones for your manly functions, as well as, like I said, when you're having sexual intercourse, your libido, um, that's what the prostate gland is. And uh, what often goes wrong? What's the most common thing before, I believe it's more common than cancer? No, so the most common thing with your prostate is benign prostatic hyperplasia, okay. which basically means that it's inflamed. And then afterwards, then you get your malignancy, which is prostate cancer. 
And uh, I believe there are symptoms we could pick up uh, while it's still at its early stages of just enlargement of the prostate. So when you have um, a small volume of your prostate cancer, you're actually asymptomatic, mm -hmm. right? So that's where it helps to go have your screening um, PSA, prostatic specific antigen. Uh, when you have um, your T1 lesions, um, it's diagnosed by transurethral um, resection of your prostate gland. And then when you have a larger volume of the prostate gland, you can already understand that this is now constricting your urethra. So your symptoms are obviously um, urinary obstruction. When you can't have urine flowing naturally, you can have nocturia where you have uh, lots of, when you go to the toilet a lot at night, uh, you can have frequency, and then sometimes you can have um, urine, uh, blood coming out of your urine, which is less common. And then when it's more advanced, you can have um, spasms of your muscles and back pain. I believe men of a certain age should be wary of nocturia where they have to frequently go to the toilet and when they get there, number one, the urine doesn't come out. Yes. Number two, it comes out in small volumes. That's correct. And you just feel this urgency. And I, this is early stages of some kind of abnormality with the prostate. It's, it's more, your, more of your advanced stage because now your urethra is not work, your, your urethra is obstructed. So you want to go to the toilet, but urine is not coming out as well as it should. And therefore you have those symptoms. But it doesn't always mean cancer. Not always. Like I said, there are many um, diseases that affect the prostate gland that can lead to prostate, uh, to urine not coming out properly, as well as other medical conditions that can also cause those symptoms. Around what age does uh, the, the domain have to be aware of the constant urine edge sim symptoms? So it varies with everybody, um, depending on your family history, right? So if you have an, um, a family history of fa uh, prostate cancer, as young as 40, you need to start worrying about that. Mm. But the usual, usual ages, um, when you're older, and you're um, above 60 to 80. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but let's go back to this one, because guys out there, uh, as soon as you are, we are 40, I believe we are meant to go for our checkups. Yes, and it's a simple checkup, a, just a blood test, a prostate, a PSA, okay. and then that helps determine whether it's in the correct range for your age or whether it's elevated. And you said PSA means again? Prostate specific antigen. Okay, it's yeah. done through a blood test. Yes, sir. So it's the first step. Yes, and then there's obviously the rectal exam. And when do we do that? <laughs> when you... The fun one. <laughs> Who is it fun for? <laughs> okay, so um, obviously when your, your disease is more advanced, so when your PSA is rather elevate, is elevated, it's very important to also do a digital rectal examination to see the size of the prostate gland. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is prostate cancer more common in black men and why? Um, so it's, we, found, we found that it's more aggressive in black men compared to white men. Um, and there are many reasons for this. One of the reasons is that one, the health care seeking um, behavior for black men is quite different. Um, black men will have symptoms and, go n and not go see a doctor. So then they present with a larger volume of disease, which is obviously more aggressive now. Um, and then there's a, other reasons such as socioeconomic uh, reasons um, bi biologic, biological reasons as well, and then our genetic predisposition. Um, the, the, I mean, you say that way. I've, I've known of situations where men would laugh at each other mm -hmm. about dribbling on your pants. And what does dribbling on your pants imply, by the way? It means that you can't control your urine um, output, and urine is just flowing without... Um, the control of you without you being able to control it mm. yeah so it's not a good sign because now you've got a bit of incontinence and many reasons many um, diseases can cause that mm. so, so there's a misconception we'll deal with myths later there's a misconception that you only get 
stuff down on your prostate, checkups and stuff when you are at the treatment stage. Can you please help us with that? So, um, that is a, it's a very bad myth in the sense that you shouldn't be seeing a doctor when you're having symptoms. It's mm. important to go for screening. Um, the, easy, the earlier that the cancer is detected, um, the more chance of being able to um, cure it or mm. rather control it so that it doesn't progress to other organs. Um, once it's obviously advanced, um, to then you have more symptoms and then it's more difficult to, to achieve um, control. Mm. Please tell us about prostate cancer itself because <laughs> this episode is about prostate cancer. So please tell us what is prostate cancer? Now that we know what the prostate is. Okay, so prostate cancer is a malignancy that is only um, found in men, uh, the prostate gland. You have different types of prostate cancer. You have your um, moderately differentiated um, ca prostate cancer, your adenocarcinomas, your neuroendocrine carcinomas, your acinate carcinomas. Um, and this is just based on the histology of your prostate gland. Histology meaning the appearance of the cells? Yes, under the microscope. Okay. Yes. And then what's, I mean, what relevance are the various stages to the common person? Okay, so we've got different stages of cancer, and this is based on the aggressiveness of the cancer. You have your very low risk, your... Um, intermediate risk, your medium risk, and your high risk, and then you've got mm. your metastatic um, prostate cancer, your stage four. Mm. Um, obviously, like it's self-explanatory, your low risk, it's a low risk for it to, prog uh, there's a very low risk for it pro to progress to um, malignant to stage four, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then obviously all these stages are treated differently. Um, then you have your intermediate risk, and then your high risk, which is more aggressive. Mm. And then you have your stage four, which has now spread to other organs, including your bones, which is the first place that it spreads to. And then obviously, if it's um, uh, also metastatic, it can also spread to your lungs and your liver and okay. your brain. Two words. Malignancy means it's cancerous. Yes, sir. And cancer means it's got ability to cause damage and it's got ability to cause spread. And spread goes to metastatic. Yes. Meaning it can be found in other organs even though it began in the prostate. Yes. Okay. Now we are aware of that. Malignancy means it's cancerous and metastatic means it started spreading and this is around stage four. Yes. So the earlier we treat things, the earlier we check things, the more we can prevent things going to sta higher stages where there's a chance of them being highly cancerous. Is that too, simplific yes. too simplistic? So the earlier we can control it, um, the less chances of it going to other organs, right? But then the nature of cancer, and, and this is why it's one of the most um, horrible journeys patients go through, is that you can get control for a few years, and then after um, a few years later, sometimes it can recur and spread to other organs. Now let's talk light at the end of the tunnel. What are the interventions that we have access to? Okay, so... Everything in South Africa depends on your age, your medical, whether you've got other medical conditions. Um, so with early prostate cancer, um, that's less aggressive. You have the option of um, active surveillance, meaning that we don't intervene until there is obvious symptoms. Then you have the option of andro androgen deprivation therapy, which is we are trying to now control the cancer using um, um, medication that controls your hormones. Um, you have the option of... So this androgen has to do with higher testosterone, that? Not necessarily? No, no not necessarily. Um, do you limit the amount of testosterone in our body? Yes, yes. Okay. So you've got your hypothalam hypothalamic um, pituitary um, in index that controls the release and um, control of your testosterone levels. Um, testosterone is produced by your, your prostate gland, your adrenal glands, um, your testicles, 
and we control that mechanism by using androgen deprivation therapy. Um, you've got the option of surgery, um, which comes in many forms. You can either have um, a TERP where you just take out a bit of your prostate gland, or you can have a radical prostatectomy where you take out your whole prostate gland. Um, you've got the, and now we've got the option of even robotic assisted um, prostatic um, um, excision of your surgery, yes. Mm -hmm. And then you've got um, radiation therapy where we use high um, megavoltage x-rays to control the prostate um, cancer. And then you've got the option of um, brachytherapy whereby we insert radioactive seeds into the prostate gland which release radiation to kill the cancer. And then there's um, chemotherapy. This is when you at your stage four therapy, as well as immunotherapy, which targets um, your um, um, cells on your cancer to prevent the cancer from spreading. Okay, uh, what's the most commonly applied intervention? It, it always depends on the patient. Mm -hmm. Um, and the patient's stage, as well as the patient's comorbidities. So oh, if, yes, so we make our decisions based on that and also evidence-based and then what the patient also desires. The worry about this is that it affects your manhood. Yes. It's a big thing. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> what are the side effects um, to manhood functionality? <laughs> So there's a, there's a couple of um, side effects, right? It does, ca the medication can cause um, loss of libido, including erectile dysfunction. It can cause urinary symptoms, um, but you have to choose um, between your life and whether you can live um, with your manhood being compromised for a few months while you're on treatment. Okay. Yes. Or some of it is reversible. Yes, and you can also use other medical interventions um, like if you're having erectile dysfunction, you can put somebody on something that will stimulate them to have mm. them an erection. Okay, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. It's not all bad. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, the duration <coughs> of your cancer treatment is maybe like six months or sometimes a year. And it's just about making that decision to either, um, you can, whether you can live without um, having an erection or not. And I mean, if this is more important to you than having your cancer treatment, it's a discussion that you need to have with your doctor. Be mm. honest, open and frank about it, that it's important for me to have an erection. I've got a wife at home that I need to keep happy or a lady at home. Um, and therefore, doc, please understand mm. that. But I suppose the overriding advice is that if we catch things early, the damage is less. The side effects of the medication are less because there's less intervention to be done at the end. That's, that's very important. Um, and I'm glad you've said that because the less disease burden there is, and the earlier we detect prostate cancer, um, the, earlier, the, the, the less work or treatments that you need in order to control it. Mm. Yeah. Hold that thought, Doc. We would like to go viral now with Dr. Bunolo Mashishi. He gives us updates on all the viral uh, action and activity that's been going on around. Over to you, Dr. Bunolo Mashishi. Foot and mouth disease is a condition that we see commonly in animals. So disclaimer, I'm not a veterinarian. Um, this is not to be confused with hand, foot and mouth disease that we see commonly in children, particularly those still going to crash. So both viruses or the two viruses that cause these conditions um, cause a blister-like uh, rash that we see in animals. These animals are typically animals with hooves. So that includes sheep, goats, calves, um, you name it. And then obviously in children in hand, foot and mouth disease, we see uh, the blisters around the mouth, the hand, um, and, and the feet, hence the name. So unfortunately with foot and mouth disease, you can get it, particularly if, you, if you're eating untreated or improperly cooked meat, particularly pork meat. Thank you, our ever informative Dr. Bunolo Mashishi. You are still watching Ask Your Doctors. 
We are still hanging out with a specialist oncologist, Dr. Nokwanda Zuma. Hi, Doc. Thank you for hanging out. Hello, Dr. K. Yes. Uh, after that, uh, let's talk something more positive. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we spoke about treatment, but let's have the fun part of the show. Let's talk myths and debunk the myths for us. Um, let's talk predisposing factors. Predisposing factors is family history. Mm -hmm. If you've got a, 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 um, a member in your family who was diagnosed with prostate cancer, um, being a man, obviously. Um, also, if you're overweight and you've got um, other comorbidities, those are the high risk factors. Smoking and alcohol? Um, yes, um, smoking because it can affect um, the the carcinogenicity of your cells generally? Yes, so it, smoking can prevent the, your body from being able to heal mm. um, and cause um, carcinogenesis, basically normal cell converting into a carcinogenic abnormal cell. Okay, carcinogenicity or whatever, we may just be uh, modifying words. Carcinogenic means more prone to cancer. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then does exercise make things better? Um, it can. Um, in, every, in every cancer it always helps. But if you always, if you predispose in the terms of you've got the gene that will carry, um, that you carry to, um, to get the prostate cancer, then you are still, whether you exercise or not. Um, I talk. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. Look, how can we prevent things happening? Um, it's more about fun. yeah. So it's more <laughs> about um, detecting it earlier on. Mm. So the importance of knowing your family history. Um, so we always always think that prostate cancer is a disease for older men, okay. and that's another myth that people think I have. And it's not. It can sometimes affect young men as young as forty, and okay. you, that's why you need to start s s your screening earlier on. So the earlier that it's detected the earlier you can go for treatment and get early control. Okay. And uh, any other myths that you've come across in your field? Um, that cancer is a disease for white people. Okay. Um, it can affect um, both any, any um, racial um, group. group, yes. Okay. Um, and it's more aggressive in the black community. Um, we've also discussed that. And this is purely because of our, um, it always presents, it is, it's more aggressive in terms of we've got a genetic um, predisposition for more aggressive disease. Okay. And you said one of the myths is that it's not curable. Yes. We control it. Um, and as long as we can control it, sometimes pe people want to say we, you're in remission. So you can be in remission for five years, two years, S and then sometimes you can come back after a few years. That's why it's important to continue your journey with your oncologist, even when you've um, completed your treatment, whereby you go for either your six monthly or um, yearly um, PSA checks. Okay. And uh, one of the tips and one of the relief um, elements you came up with is that for people that are really fearful of the rectal uh, exam, there's a PSA test, if things are still calm. <laughs> yes, so you can do a blood test where you check your prostate-specific antigen. Um, that's less invasive. Okay. And then if your prostate-specific prostate antigen is elevated, then it's yeah. important for the urologist um, to do your digital rectal exam, just to see what size your prostate gland is. And then obviously after that, then they'll do a ultrasound guided um, biopsy. And then that's okay. where you can find whether you are diagnosed with cancer or not. So there are GPs that perform the, 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 the test, yes. the, the rectal test. Yes. But the ultimate person that performs it is a urologist. Yes, they okay. will be able to do the biopsy for you. And we will be getting a urologist coming up soon on our program. That's great news. Um, thank you for coming, Doc. And uh, where do we find you physically and uh, uh, digitally? Okay. So I work at Netke Olivedale Hospital at the Oncology Department. I'm also at Busamed Morofontaine 
uh, which is on Marlboro Drive, um, Oncology Center. And then I'm also at Pine Haven, Pine Haven Hospital. Okay. On Instagram, I am Dr. Underscore Zuma Underscore Oncology. Um, those are the places that you can get me. And website? Um, it's www.drzumaoncology.com. Awesome. And then the other website where you'll find it is our website, which is askyourdoctors.co.za. You go on to click onto the tab that says find a doctor and you will be able to access all the specialists and special guests that have been on our show in the past and in the future. And uh, if you think your brand relates to what we do here and you would like to advertise with us, please follow the link that is on the screen right now. You can throw us a DM or even go back to our website to get more accurate contact details. And if you would like to share this, please feel free. You can like and subscribe because when you subscribe, you get first-hand uh, updates when something uh, like a new episode comes up. And this has been Ask Your Doctors. Until next time, please keep asking your doctors. Thank you.